Hello again, it's only me, uh, doing a bit of a different video today, uh, discussing all the ins and outs about what foundation art is. Just to quickly introduce you to who I am in case you're new to this channel. My name's Emily and last year I did, I did a foundation degree in art and design. I got a distinction, which is like the highest grade you can get, so yeah. Before I get into the bulk of this video, I just wanted to mention I did think about uh, filming the video like with my face chatting. My face is uh, a little camera shy but my, my hands aren't camera shy so hopefully there'll be a lot of visuals popping up on screen and I'll have a lot of things to show you along the way so it won't just be all hands because I'm aware that might get a bit boring. I've also tried to spruce up my desk a little bit to make it more exciting to look at. I've been making these magnets lately for a bit of fun so I thought um, they would be nice to decorate my desk a little bit. Why am I making this video, you might be wondering. Um, it's because pretty much every week I get asked on my Instagram like direct messages um, about foundation. It's one of my most asked questions, so I thought it could be helpful um, if I made one just all about my experience and telling you guys all my knowledge about it. But before I do get into discussing it, I just want to do a big disclaimer. Um, everything that I'm going to be talking about is just my experience. I am but one girl and my experience might be completely different to other people's. I personally loved my foundation year. This is all just my opinion and all my knowledge. So um, if you are seriously considering about doing foundation and y y you're basing it all just off this one video, I recommend maybe do your research and try and watch other videos and get other people's opinions. Yeah, if you did do a foundation, degree and would like to type in the comments your experience and your thoughts about it in a helpful way I'm sure that would be really beneficial for some people and then myself a very quick scribbly list of things I want to get through in this video uh, so in this video I want to cover first off what exactly is a foundation art degree then I want to just sort of go through my general thoughts and, and an overview of why I might want to do that course and I'm going to go through my experience and kind of go through bit by bit everything that I did and I'll show you quite a bit of my work as well which will hopefully make this video more visually interesting rather than just being my hands and then I'm going to answer some questions because I put a little thing on my Instagram story asking if any of you guys had some questions so I'll, I'll get around to answering some of them and to finish this video off I'm going to do some pros and cons and just a general conclusion about foundation So first off, what is foundation art? You might not have a clue because to be honest, I had no clue. I didn't even know about the existence of foundation art until uh, my first year of college. A foundation degree is an optional year that you can do in between um, your A-levels and university. So you do your A-levels, then you might decide to do a foundation year and then after that go to uni. You don't have to go to university afterwards, but that's what I think most people do. A foundation degree is optional and most people just decide to do A-levels and then go straight to uni. You might be thinking, what's actually the point of doing a foundation year then if you can just go straight to uni? Well, here I'm about to say some stuff about it. I think the main reason I picked foundation art was because I was just a bit stuck after A-levels. I did fine art and graphic design for my A-levels, well, as well as dance, but that's not really relevant. I was really stuck. I enjoyed doing paintings. I did a lot of paintings like this. I'll pop some paintings up on screen, which I was doing at A-levels, um, but at the same time, I also really enjoyed doing things like this, which was um, more illustrations, more cartoons, and I was really stuck. I'd gone to quite a few like university open days. I'd been to multiple talks about different subjects. I was stuck. Do I want to do fine art, illustration, even animation I was looking at. I was really torn at the time between what I wanted to do. So having uh, the chance to do a foundation course really helped me decide fully and just be sure in myself of what I wanted to do at uni. It was a year where I realised, hold on, yeah, illustration is really the one for me. And foundation helped me decide that because it just gave me the chance to really explore illustration further as I hadn't been able to do that much in A-levels just because A-levels are a bit hectic, aren't they? You've got to juggle three subjects. So it's a year where you can just really focus on art. Another thing which I thought was really helpful, it bridges, it bridges the gap between A-level. I feel like in A-levels, there's a lot of teaching. You get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the teachers. However, at uni, complete opposite. I barely speak to my teachers. I've spoken to them for like, I don't know, <laughs> 
20 minutes probably all together just me and them so it bridges the gap between having quite a lot of support to being pretty much nearly fully independent in uni. Another big reason for me was after A-levels finished I just didn't really feel ready to move away from home. I mean even though now I am at uni um, I'm basically at home. <laughs> I've been at home more than I've been there because of how things are but if things were normal I'd be at university pretty much all the time which would have been a big shock to the system after A-levels just because I didn't really feel ready but the year of foundation I don't know I just felt like I, <laughs> I felt like I matured and I, the, the prospect of living away from home wasn't as scary anymore but that was just because my foundation course was local to me I know some foundation courses you might have to move away to do depending on what which course you go to so you might have to live away from home anyway if you do a foundation course so i guess it's all dependent on how far away the course is that you've chosen it also better prepares you just creatively <laughs> it's a whole year of improvement and getting better so by the time you get to university you're a lot better than you were at A levels. Final thing on the list is yet to try new things. Yeah, foundation really is a year of just exploring. I did so many different forms of art which uh, we never even touched on in A level graphics or fine art. I got to try out so many things. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And now I'm going to move on to sort of my experience and just chat through bit by bit what I actually did on foundation. If you want a more in-depth video about all of my work, I had a video which I will link in the description where I went through all my books um, in a lot of detail, flipped through every page and showed everything that I got up to. This is all the work I did over my foundation year, so I'm quickly going to go through some bits from here. Okay, so this is the first big chunk of work I did and I also just want to again quickly mention this is what I did on my foundation course. Each course is different, um, so what I'm showing you I did, you know, you might not do on your foundation course. And we started off with work which, I'm not going to lie, did not fill me with very much excitement. We're doing more 3D and sculptural stuff. Like I say in foundation, you try out a lot of things, so not everything's going to be your cup of tea. Um, and I mean, it was fun to do, it just wasn't really my sort of art. We made this big sculpture thing out of just rubbish that we all brought in. Writing wise in foundation there is quite a bit of writing but nowhere near as much as you do in A-levels. I had to write so much in A-levels. I mean we still have to do like artist research and stuff like this but I honestly I think I went a bit overboard. You didn't have to write this much it was just me being a bit extra. And also you did evaluations at the end of every project which was like I say, I went a bit overboard, you didn't have to write as much as I did. Other than that, you didn't really have to write too much, which was nice because in A-levels I feel like you had to write a really chunky paragraph about every tiny thing you did. So as I'm flipping through these pages, you'll probably notice that it's just a bit all over the place. One day we were making origami clothes, the next day we were doing collages, and then the next day I was making a theme park in a box. Things moved quick in foundation as well, which I really enjoyed. At the beginning of the year, the projects moved quite quickly. I think we probably had about three weeks was the longest project we have. I think most of them were two weeks long. I made this um, theme park in a box and I really enjoyed this project. I learnt how to solder bits of metal together, which um, I'd never done before and I'd never made sculptures before as well, so it was just exploring a completely new art form. And then we moved on to fashion and making wearable structures. One of my favourite things about foundation, especially in the beginning, was you never really knew what you was going to be up to. Um, each day you'd just be doing something completely different and I just really like that thought of waking up in the morning and think I wonder what I'm going to do today because you genuinely, you didn't know. <laughs> just did this little illustration for some fun. The work in this book, even though, even though it was really different and I'm sure it was, it was quite beneficial for me to try out something new, it wasn't really me. We moved on to the next projects which were more what I'm interested in. We moved on to illustration. Oh this was an illustration project. Yay! We did a big project about um, sort of architecture in Blackpool if I remember rightly and we had to create an illustration inspired by the architecture in Blackpool. So that was this project. Much more me, a lot more drawing. The last project didn't really include that much drawing. Oh this was fun. Um, another day where you just rock up and they're like, right, today we're going to print on some fabric. And it was really fun, I enjoyed it. We just have a lot of little workshops where you just learn a random skill <laughs> alongside the bigger project. So this was another little workshop about screen printing. This was my final illustration, I'll pop it on screen right now. 
Unit 5, we moved on to colour. We were doing a bunch about abstract painting. Everyone in the class had like their different um, passions and the different things they were good at. So obviously I liked illustration and painting, so this was, I really enjoyed these two units, but there were other people in the class who much preferred the, like the sculpture and the 3D aspect of art. And there were others which were all about fashion. There were a couple of photographers in the class. Yeah, everyone had their different strengths. Abstract painting. Some more abstract painting. Then we moved on to the final piece, which was on this big canvas. I'll put a picture up of it on screen right now of what the final piece looked like. So everything that you've just seen there was just sort of mini projects, which takes up the first half of the year. And after you've done that, you move on to what's called the extended brief, where you get a little bit more time and a lot more freedom. I decided to do illustration because I'd, I think by this point I'd realised illustration was really what I was interested in. I made a piece of art which was about the Australian bushfires, sort of pretending that it was like a leaflet for a charity that was helping out with the Australian bushfires because at the time that was what was happening and it was all over the news. Some experiments, more experiments, I'll pop a picture up of this on screen because it'll look a bit nicer. <laughs> this is, oh my final piece, so I made these three illustrations which all came together to make this final piece where I joined them all together on Photoshop so it's kind of like a book but then you could also unfold it like that <laughs> so it was one big long piece moving on to my final book now so everything in this book is for my final major project uh, you've got a lot of time on this maybe around three months I'm not exactly sure but you get a lot of time on this project and it's all led by you you decide exactly what you want to do so even though I chose illustration everyone was doing all sorts there were people doing fashion photography 3d interior design um, architecture character design yeah if you want to do a foundation course and you're just looking at my work and thinking oh it's all all blooming illustration no that's just because that's what I chose to do everyone does something different so if you wanted to do a project all about fashion and like textiles you could do that you could do whatever you wanted I decided I wanted to make a children's book that was gonna be my final project and this is all the work leading up to that I actually have a series on my channel it's called um, a week of foundation art I think I made around eight videos kind of like the videos I make now about like a week of art university I did that with foundation and I will link them below as well where I would just kind of film a week of my life in art foundation and I started making those videos when I was doing this project tried a bit of needle felting collaging um, storyboarding panning out each page of the book if you've been watching my videos for a while you'll probably be familiar with these characters um, I made this book called Bean and Bog it was around this point as well that lockdown happened so I never like fully finished my foundation degree in foundation it kind of got cut a bit short and we kind of got cut off it's when these post-its started coming in because I had plans to print my work off because I didn't really have access to a, a good printer at home so I was hoping ah when things go back to normal in a in a month or so I'll go back into uni and I'll print all my work off and I'll pop them in my book but obviously that didn't happen so yeah there's a lot of gaps in this book from now on so this is all just drawings to do with that book um, and I think foundation actually finished before I managed to finish the book. So my final projects, I only submitted, I think probably around half of the book, but because I was so dedicated to the project and I'd really invested a lot of time into the children's book and the characters, I decided to just finish it for myself anyway. I'll show you this. So this was my finished piece in foundation. And I'm, you've probably seen this before if you've watched a lot of my videos, cause I talk about it a lot, cause I'm just really proud of it. I made this children's book um, and it was probably around, actually I remember the exact page. This was the last illustration I managed to do for the foundation project um, and because I was so dedicated to this book I carried on and I finished it and I just finished it for myself because I was really, I don't know, I really liked it, I really wanted to finish it because I'd invested so much time into it. Yeah, so that was my finished piece for our foundation and that's all the work I did for it. Okay, moving on, I thought it would be nice to answer some of your questions, so I popped a thing up on my Instagram story uh, last night asking if anyone had questions regarding foundation and I'll do my best to answer them. Just because I'm wary that this video is going to be quite boring because it's just this, it's just my hands. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do from now on is just do a voiceover and I will pop up some visuals of my old foundation videos when I was making this book because I think they'll just tie in nicely with this video so I will pop 
those visuals up now whilst I go through some questions. Okay, do my service here for a bit now and these are just a bunch of clips that I've compiled together from all my foundation videos. If you want to watch all these things in full, I will link the playlist uh, in the description where all these clips came from. Getting on to answering some questions. First on the list, how did your style change from the start of the year compared to the end? Well, I don't really know if I have a style. I definitely didn't have one at the beginning of foundation and I don't really know if I have one now. It just, I don't know, it kind of changes with every single piece I draw, but um, there was definitely an improvement and I'm going to put up some pictures now of a children's book that I made in my second year of A-level graphics compared to uh, the children's book that I'm making in these all these clips, the Bean and Bog book and I think there's a definite improvement so yeah that's all thanks to foundation. Uh, next question is the admission process stressful, finding work to make your portfolio and being interviewed? And um, for me, the interview was like, it was just really laid back because I did my foundation course at the college I already went to. So I just stayed an extra year and did it there. So I already knew the teachers and the teacher knew me. So it was just really laid back. Portfolio wise, I just kind of showed her a few bits of my work because well, she already knew me, but I imagine if you were going obviously to a different place to do it, uh, the portfolio would be quite similar to one that you'd apply to uni with. And I did make a portfolio video a while ago, which I will also link in the description if you want a more in-depth video on like how to make a portfolio. I'm not really that helpful on that one because um, my interview <laughs> and my portfolio was, was just a really laid back experience. What is the workload like? It's quite a lot because it is, you know, it's um, because it's a higher education subject. I mean, you have to do a lot of work because it's, you know, you're getting a degree for it. As long as you stay on top of it, it's all right. And I mean, there are times where the work just seemed like an insane amount, but then there were other times where things were pretty chill. It just kind of depended on how much work you had to do that week. But I'd say it's probably about the same level as the amount of work you have to do in A-levels, maybe even a tiny bit less actually, because you're only doing one subject and in A-levels you have to do three subjects. So I guess it was probably a little bit less actually. How do fees work? Is it an extra student debt? Well, for me, I kind of got really lucky because I my foundation course was for free. Like I said before, I just stayed at my college to do my course there. And if you already went to that college, you got the course for free, which um, was very nice. But I think for most people, um, you do have to pay for it, just kind of how you have to pay for uni, which is something to take into consideration. It is a lot of money. I just got very lucky with my course and didn't have to pay for it, which is another big reason why I chose to do a foundation course because it was another year of free education. <laughs> Next question, did you find it difficult to complete tasks when you hated slash dislike the technique? Um, yeah, sometimes when I was flipping through all my work before, obviously I mentioned that we had to do a lot of sculptures, which wasn't really me, and it was kind of hard to get motivated and do the work for something that you didn't really care about. But at the same time, I'm the sort of person who just always puts in 100% effort, whether uh, I like it or not, really. That's just how I am. I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to art. But that's just how it is sometimes. You're not gonna like everything you do all the time. You might not like one project you're doing, but the project after that might be something that you're really interested in. Do you think it's worth it? And did it help the transition into uni feel less nerve wracking? It definitely did. Um, when I finished A-levels, I thought of going to uni was just terrifying, but having that extra year at foundation and getting used to being more independent and just having an extra year to get older it was definitely less nerve-wracking going to university and I feel like the workload at uni wasn't as much of a shock because I kind of already experienced it at foundation if you could turn back time would you still do it or would you have gone straight to uni I would definitely still do it uh, foundation was such a fun year I really enjoyed it it was very fun it, it was one of the best years of education for me definitely more fun than a levels a levels were very stressful i mean foundation was still stressful but nowhere near as stressful as a levels and if it weren't for foundation i would never have made bean and bog and that's one of i'm really proud of that it was one of my best achievements i think um and i just feel like i learned so much in that year it was really beneficial so yeah definitely still do it Oh, and if you don't know, I never really said, but I'm now at uni studying um, illustration. I'm in my first year, so yeah, just to clear that up. What are the different pathways in the final stage of the course? Which areas of art can you pick from? Uh, I think I've already covered this, but just to reiterate, uh, pretty much anything. 
any form of art you want to do, you can do it in a foundation. Everyone in the class was doing completely different things. If you wanted to do animation, you could have done it. If you wanted to do installation, uh, 3D, photography, textiles, uh, fashion, you could have done it. You could have done anything you wanted, really. All right, I think that's all the questions I'm gonna answer for now. I did get quite a few, so I haven't managed to get through all of them. Plus, I kind of already answered a lot of them just already in this video, so I didn't wanna just keep repeating myself. That's all the questions I'm gonna answer. Uh, now back to my hands. <laughs> I thought it'd be nice to finish this video with a quick summary, a conclusion of um, all the pros and cons that I can think of, of of doing a foundation art degree. So I guess pros, first off, you get to try new things and you never know, one of those new things you try might become y your new passion. Um, who knows? You get an extra year of getting better. It's a whole year of improvement before you go to university. So um, when you do go to university, you're a much stronger artist. Also means it's a whole year of creating work for your portfolio so you'll have a stronger portfolio when applying to unis which means you might have a better chance of getting into the university that you want. Um, it also prepares you for uni because like I said at the beginning of this video it bridges the gap between the two different teaching styles um, with A levels you're getting quite a lot of support and then uni um, basically being almost independent so it helps bridge that gap. And those are all the pros I can think of at the moment and then the cons I can think of is it costs money just like going to university costs money and um, so does foundation but like I mentioned in the voiceover I got very lucky with my course because I got it for free. Yeah I think I just got lucky I'm not sure if that's the case for most people. I guess this next one could be seen as a con. Um, it means you're sort of a year behind everyone. So most people go to university when they're 18, but because I did the foundation year, I'm going when I'm 19, which I don't really think is that much of an issue, but, but I don't know, you might think it's a con. And then the last con I could think of was um, you might have to do art, which you're not really that interested in, because obviously you do do such a wide range of art in foundation, there's probably most likely going to be something that you don't really care about and you're just going to have to suck it up and do it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's all the things I can think of. I hope this video has been helpful. It's taken me quite a while to make and took quite a bit of planning uh, to figure out what I actually wanted to say. But yeah, that's everything. I hope this video wasn't too boring. I know there wasn't too much to look at with just my hands. I'm sorry. My face is... I can't... I get really shy when I try to film in my face. I just can't speak properly. <laughs> I'll be back next week with the usual content and the usual artiness. Thanks for sticking around. I hope this helped and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.